know that most of these places that are under attack in northern Nigeria have some of the biggest natural resources underneath the ground. And the trading of those natural resources are going on while people are being killed in those communities. Do you know? Now, let me bring you up to speed real quick. If you realize some of the most fertile lands in northern Nigeria are the ones that are being attacked. Most of our fresh, beautiful vegetables and fruits come from Plato State. Do you know what is underneath those beautiful, fertile lands? It is also solid minerals. Guza. For some of you who know, you know. People are killed daily while miners are mining those lands. How can you raise down an entire village? Bring it down to ashes. Evacuate everybody there. And go behind their backs to go and be mining their gold. How wicked can you be? Do you know that it's also affecting not only our economy, but also the food supply for the common man who cannot afford to eat? I am a farmer. Yes, I'm an agriculture entrepreneur. I deal with grains. And the rate at which food is going to be scarce in 2024, you are not ready for it. Things that we buy for as low as 20,000 when they are in surplus, we bought this year for 80,000 naira when it was in surplus. You are not ready for it. For us who do food storage business, we know exactly what you are saying. Ask anybody who is into farming. Underneath all of this madness, this crisis of insecurity is a major business of natural resource buying and selling. Illegal. Zamfara has gold and daily gold is traded while people are killed and evacuated from their villages. They would rather pursue you because of insecurity and go and dig your land to take out gold and take out tin, and take out other minerals. Yes, that's what's happening in northern Nigeria. They attack people using insecurity as a blanket and a facade, chase people out of their communities, and go behind their backs to steal their natural resources. What that, those are the kinds of leaders we have in northern Nigeria. You are wicked people. And you have blood on your hands and you're going to be judged for it i mean that was a five minutes long video right so you can go on i'm sure i mean the video is trending online so over 115 people have been killed following the attack on several communities in boko and Burkinladi local government areas of plato state by gunmen as usual, this incident has been followed by public outcries and promises by the authorities to arrest the situation and prevent its reoccurrence, specifically in the northern region of Nigeria. But this always happens over and over again, so much that the killings in the north is soon becoming a, um, a threat right, to food supply across the country. So tonight we're asking, what are your thoughts on this alleged you know, looming food scarcity and, of course, the natural resource theft, you know, especially by this young farmer that lives up north. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa one All right, so, I mean, let me just ask your initial thoughts when you saw those videos, right? Because it was on Christmas Day that yeah. we had the very, very sad report that people, there was fresh attack in, mm -hmm. in Plato. And I think how many days after, again, another attack happened, yeah. right? Um, wh when, you, when you saw this video, right, what was your initial, what came to your mind, initial um, thoughts, yeah? So when I saw her clip, which I saw obviously a couple of days right after the Christmas Eve incident happened that we woke up on Christmas Day to hear about, 
it, it, it was shock at the fact that because you know there are different perspectives to a story and because you're not the person on ground you're open to fit to digesting what the media tells you because you, you are not the person on ground so this lady has been on ground apparently she has maybe inside information on, on, on what is going on that what we have the information we have over here in Lagos so I think for me my first reaction would be shock I mean I know there are a couple of evil or wicked wicked acts going on across the country but I just didn't think of it like this you know and yes I'm, I've been aware that there will be a looming food scarcity I mean UNICEF has put out a warning to Nigerians that we should be aware that between 2023 and going on into 2024 there would be massive food scarcity as a matter of fact they put a statistics of over 25 million people will be hugely hit by this food scarcity but then for me the shock is the fact that we are here thinking okay maybe this is fueled by terrorists but at the back end of it is the possibility or the allegation that somebody is taking advantage of this suffering or is, is putting Ooh, people yeah. in distress there's always profiting in chaos Yes, I, I mean, yes. There's, there there's is, a there's, cartel. There's a cartel that understand that these people, the only way you can probably steal from them is you have to first of all cause ruckus, you know, then of displace course people. displace people in the bid to say you are trying to whatever, you then mine there, which is, I mean, I, I, I don't really have so much. Um, wisdom, let me call it like that, because someone is like, ah, what do you know? You're a no problem. But I know for sure the fact that we have not solved the problem of insecurity, right. especially in this part of the, co the uh, country, it means somebody is heavily profiting from it or some people are heavily profiting from it. It's the same thing with Niger Delta. Yeah. Do you understand? You cause a lot of chaos and you're stealing the oils, right? So, well, and right go now, ahead. the death toll has actually increased from 115 as of the reports this morning. The death toll we are looking at over 200 people that have been discovered killed and then hundreds of homes Dis burnt and displaced. displaced you know and i was i was reading up and i found that this just drama or this this constant attacks in communities in plateau, in plateau state has been going on for as far back as the 90s 1990s yes or they're about moving into so over and over again there's like periodic attacks and right now it seems as though they have graduated to from plateau state to most of the middle belton states there is nasarawa state i think a part of nasarawa state was attacked there's zamfara like, yes borno sometime 26th and then niger too niger state was attacked 29th Buari <coughs> area of of, of in, in Abuja was attacked as well. So the question is, and also, so I remember when in Abuja I was having a discussion with someone who is pretty much high up there, and he says that literally every rock you see or every mountain you see around this territory is sold. It's money. Because there are <laughs> minerals there. And I'm thinking that is a little too selfish for you to want to be so indifferent about people's lives just because of wealth. Ah, you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked. Let me hear your initial thoughts, um, not my father. When you saw that video from the young girl, what came to your mind? Well, um, I mean, this is this is something that um, I'm praying that quickly enough that a solution is going to come, because where my thoughts went to are the children. You know, children are the most vulnerable people in society. And UNICEF as well has said that over 6 million children are at risk. 6 million children <laughs> who are under 5 are at risk of mortality during this food scarcity situation. So that for me was the determining factor as to what needs to be done as quickly as possible. Because if we're talking about, I mean, it's not like adults are not important, but children are vulnerable. So if we have 6 million children who are at risk of dying out uh, as a result of food scarcity, then our, I don't know, the government, the authorities, Something needs to give. 
in this situation. For me, that, that was where my heart went to. If adults are at risk, what is going to happen to children? How are they going to survive? And how are they going to be able to go through this process of having no food? Things are difficult as it is already. Education is out of the way because where there's insecurity, who is going to school? Who is going to school? And then their lives are threatened because there's nothing to eat as well. That in itself, if it does not prick the conscience of the government or the people in authority, then I don't know what will. At least, I, I think for me, that was where, that, that's, that's what my head is trying to wrap around as to what can happen to save children in this crisis. Okay, so I just wanted to list a few... Um, based on these allegations, right, it's important for us to understand the kind of natural resources that you have in this region. So, for instance, in Plato, these are some natural resources that I've um, I had my my intern check on for me: barite, bauxite, clay, cola, kaolin, zinc, marble, molyb molybdenite, um, pyrochlory, um, salt, tantalite, tin and um, wolfram now there's another resource that you i mean some resources that you find around zamfara area would be iron or gold chromate granite clay limestone so if you check some of the uses of this natural resources right there are things that you use to make paint rubber um Tiles. fillers yes i mean they are good for brilliance clarity chemical some chemical industries use them you know they are abrasive cement you know um, different seal and um, seal for petroleum. You know, there's, of course, you know what clay is used for yeah. cola. You know what is used for kaolin is for like taking out, ab absorbing toxins from the skin. Of mm -hmm. course, everybody knows what the value of gold right now is right. in the market, right? And, you know, I looked at the allegations mm -hmm. and I say that, see, there's some level of truth in what she's saying. Right, because go and check. We haven't gotten a proper structure. I mean, people that have mining license will tell you in this country that there's a lot of racketeering that goes on in the mining industry. ministry, right? The industry in, in, in itself, mm -hmm. where I will ask, apply for a license to mine, you would apply for a license to mine, and somehow, somehow, both of us will get the same license. You know, there's a lot of underground overhaul. And recently, recently, I, I, I remember reading it somewhere. It's just I cannot, I couldn't find that article anymore where they said that the federal government was withdrawing a lot of mining licenses, right, mm. to some of these, um, what's it called, organizations. I've said this thing several times, and I'll say it over and over again. For us to be able to move forward in this country, we cannot have a centralized system that caters to the resources of each state. We have to find a way to decentralize control, that every state has power to be able to mine. Because now, for you to be able to mine anything, you need to first of all go and get an approval and a license in Abuja. You don't need to do all of that. Mm -hmm. Because if we decide to say that we want to solve this problem, right? If it is true, which I strongly agree with this young girl that there's a lot of theft going on, because if not, why? It is so senseless. It is, it is a, it's a baseless killing. Why do you need to kill people? Do you understand? There must be something that you want to take from those people. It's just like even when I was growing up in Kaduna, mm -hmm. and I remember that the... I've said this story several times. We, we were... Our house was a close. Just three houses. Our house, there was a Kaduna State indigenous house, and the northerners, they live in like a block of, you know, their own kind of style of house. Mm -hmm. Our house wasn't burnt, but they insisted on burning that Kaduna State um, 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 indigenous house. Why? He's a, he's a farmer. He had massive farmland. Do you understand? So the target was not so much about him. The target was to find a way to displace him or kill him so that they can take over his farmlands because he had an expanse. Oh, yes, he, he was a farmer, so he had expanse of land. So that is why I would tend to want to agree with what this young lady is saying. And if the government is actually serious mm -hmm. about fighting this crime, first of all, give control to the state. Let them be able to manage their territory. 
Do you understand? It, they let them control all their resources so that whatever resource comes, they'll be able to fund their, what's it called, their security personnel to be able to cater to the security and, and secure the parameters of each other's state. But you're not doing that. You're not even, so there's a lot of things going on. I've said it that in all of these things that is happening, killings and all of this, some people are profiting. I remember there was a story, uh, many, I think about just before Jonathan left um, power, power, there was a story that came out that one of the JTF, um, what's it called, um, um, whatever, JTF per, uh, person bought a house in Banana as a den for 400 million. Where did you get the money from? And you're supposed to be part of the people that are supposed to be securing, you understand, and fighting against um, insecurity and Boko Haram and all of those people. Mm -hmm. So people are steadily profiting from this and they don't care. What is even worrisome now is that, okay, yes, so you've, we've allowed you to profit from this. What is happening to food? Farmers cannot go to their farm. I remember several times they were complaining of how they were being attacked. They were being killed. They were being kidnapped. Then there were some that were saying that if you want to go and harvest your crop, you have, you to, have pay. to pay. Which is really Come on. sad. And the fact that, yet yeah, there has been predictions, not just for Nigeria, but globally, that the world is looking at food insecurity. Well, I think for Nigeria, we have the perfect climate. We have... We have no we excuse. Have everything. And we have food at our beck and call. The only thing that is a challenge to food production is insecurity and terrorism, you know? And the fact that people would do that. Now, about what you said... Uh, decentralizing power from I like what Minister of Interior is doing the fact that he's like you know we don't have to bring all the attention to Abuja to come and change marriage certificate and change of name is not needed I like that I applaud him however I think just like you said we should do the same to things like maybe state policing or or letting the governor manage the resources of their territory however most people would argue that a major disadvantage of that would be you could be looking at autonomy and the fact that yes you're no longer dealing with the federal government directly now but then the the, the governors can also twist and turn it a they certain way so there's this issue anything. of everything should be built on structure everything should be built on structure and let me tell you something all these excessive states if they say there's a state today that the state does not have natural resources join the other state because even this our thing that we did i i really don't buy the idea of us having multiple states. Do you understand? We have 36 states and a federal capital territory. How productive are some of these states? They don't have anything. So everybody goes no, in hand to you Abuja. Can't, you can't say, no. you can say they don't have anything. No, I think some of these states don't have. They don't. Do you I understand? So I think Nigeria is such a blessed okay, nation let's that there are so <laughs> We will open the phone line. I want to know the, the, the one that you think. I'm saying they, there has been some arguments that if we if we told that line. Some people don't have natural resources. Do you understand? And I'm saying if you don't have, join the people that have. Must you be governor? All right, thanks for staying with us. If you just tuned in, it's our ladies' night out. God, this is 2024. I'm supposed to not be. <laughs> Not to be it's the fourth of January. It's, it's so governance. Early, so it's governance. It's governance. Still adjusting. All right, so we're discussing this looming food scarcity. It's really, really worrisome, right? And it is. of course, the allegations around natural resource theft, right, that we have in the country. Now, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to one eight zero three four six six three. Our phone line is now open as well. Please, the number to call is zero seven zero two five zero zero seven seven four nine. That's the number to call. All right, uh, Norman, let me hear your thoughts because you, I think you wanted to come in when I was talking about states, you know. Say that. I think, um, and it still boils down to what you uh, we have continued to talk about, the level of governance. There's a part where we have elected people to come in and begin to chart the course for the nation and then the aspect of governance. Now, who do you hold responsible for that? These are allegations, allegations that natural resources are leaving our country without consent, or some people have put together some agreement and are cutting away with our natural resources, and these things are not being beneficial. Now, who are you going to, who is going to be accountable for that? Where is the Ministry of Foreign Affairs or the, um, that, or those that are handling our Minister natural resources. 
what are what, who is accounting for and I, I think that's part of our major problem that structure aspect the fact that also the level of greed that has become the the norm for the Niger for Nigerians in general it is it is very alarming so everybody's thinking about themselves there's so much lack of uh, humanity in our thought process funny enough i was having a conversation yeah uh, the other day with someone and <laughs> they were talking about an opportunity where um an opportunity that came just in the football aspect of things and these uh, uh, countries were busy negotiating uh different uh uh, packages for their country. Oh, you're yeah, coming to come and invest this and that in our country. So, so amount of years. And those who were supposedly representing Nigeria just wanted cash. Give us cash and we're good. So you're talking about people who have no interest of Nigerian citizens at heart. And we keep on bringing this way, churning them in and out and saying that these are our leaders there's something really has to give in the place of governance because if we don't hold our uh, our leaders accountable then nobody accounts for what is going on this is going on who do we ask what is happening why is crisis still going on why is security not being tackled but like you rightly said because a number of people are benefiting from the chaos that is going on in nigeria then it is not our business. So I think in the area of governance, this is an aspect that Nigerians really need to begin to ask questions, the right kind of questions, begin to direct it to the right people, the, the leaders and the authorities in different aspects. Because if we do not wake up to the realities of what is going on, like the lady said, I think I watched the, the, the full version of it, she said, don't think that because it's happening in, in the north, for example, it's not going to come down to the east or to the south. All of the areas in Nigeria are being affected by the situation, and we're all going to be affected one way or the other. No, but it's already happening, Unoma. Mm. It's already happening because as it is now, right, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, first of all, there's a lot of hike in food prices, right? Mm -hmm. Because again, the produce have reduced drastically. Yes. Yes. Because, because again, the farms have been, have been affected. Absolutely. Been farms have been affected. So the, the produce has reduced drastically. So it's already happening. You know, so I, and this is where this is where I, I feel like, you know, governors should have a bit of humanity in it because this conversation is not that is not what is happening in Japan that is a natural disaster that has gotten us it's to where we are. This, this, is, yeah. this is completely this is human. You understand? Created, created it those, is completely human because if we were dealing with heavy weather conditions like what they are having abroad with blazing, uh, what's it called? Blazers, uh, blazers with with uh, cold snow, or is it um, is it the fire that ha always happens in Australia that you just have fire burning all the farmlands or whatever, fire. wildfires and all of that? We don't have the earthquakes. We don't have any of those things, right? So if Even at all anybody should be for. talking about food scarcity or food insecurity, mm -hmm. it is not a country like Nigeria because. For every land in this country, if you put in something, I remember behind my father's uh, um, compound, we used to plant corn. We will plant and it will grow, right? Like literally, there's no place in Nigeria that you will not put in a, a seed, seed, that it will not bring forth it something. That is how blessed and fertile our lands are. So, so yes. if we're having issues and we're saying there's a looming food scarcity, then it is not the it's not the it's not what the globe. Yes, there is a Russia Ukraine war going on that's affecting mm -hmm. food scarcity in other places. Mm -hmm. But that is not the case in our own. It might affect seedlings, yes. Because I know others who will argue that some of these seedlings will bring them out of it. But I'm saying yeah. that even within the shores of this country, mm -hmm. if we will just deal with the issues of insecurity, it would go very far in how we can protect ourselves. And it is just having humanity at the back of governance where you think like okay 
because Sazi is my citizen, she cannot go to bed hungry. She needs to feed, right? So you think like that, and you don't you don't watch any Nigerian go to bed hungry. No, if you think like that, we will not have the problems we're having. You will solve this problem of insecurity because again, it is not you and I that are going to go and steal gold to sell. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it is not you and I that are stealing natural resources to sell. Right. These people are the people that they have the yam, they have the knife. They control it. It is not small people that are in these cartels. These are powerful people. They are powerful right? people. These are people that control resources. Which brings me to ask the question, what? yes, you said something about governance and them being in touch with the people. Now, the fact that this same crisis happens over and over again, it makes me raise the question, like, is Mr. President really in touch with the realities of what is going on? And I'll tell you why I'm, ask, I'm asking this question. If you listen to his January 1st speech at 7 a.m., amongst every other thing he mentioned, yes, he acknowledged inflation, 28% 20, inflation and every other thing he said. And there was a lot of, we're hoping, we are renewing hope and we're hopeful. Yes, I get that. But the, the easiest thing for him to have done during that speech was to point out that Plateau people, I am aware of what happened. This he never like, mentioned he it. Never, it was as though it never happened. happened. Like, this is your very first live bro Yes. Vice President Shetima may have, you know, put out word and gone there to visit, but you are the president of the country. It matters a lot that people feel that you can see them, that you can hear them, and that did not happen. So which raises the question, is, is information being filtered to them? Because some, some, somewhere inside of me, I find it difficult to believe that you can actually sit down and watch people suffer and not be bothered to do anything about it. So the question I'm asking is, the information that is passed down to Mr. President by his aides or whoever, however the, the hierarchy or the functions goes on in the Asuro, do they filter the reality no, so this of is, incidents so this going on in This conversation around information, you see, if you, if you had brought this argument years ago, I would buy mm -hmm. that argument. Yeah. But the truth is, come on, we're in the age where, from your phone, let's, literally, there's no way the president wants to go to. If it is television, people are talking about it. I mean, a lot of media houses mm -hmm. talked about play to state, right? So it was very, very insensitive, right? And this is where, I think it was even Uti that was saying it, that, you know, whatever it is that are your media handlers, mm -hmm. right? This is not the time for you to pretend like things are not happening. People died. Oh, surround yourself with cycle. Do you understand? People died. People are still dying. So this is not the time yeah. for us to pretend. And if now we want to add hunger to this, tell me what will happen. It means the insecurity will triple. Hmm. So I'm saying that we are already where we are. Right? You are now in positions of authority. Let us do what is right, even by, by the face of God. Let us, okay, forget that Nigerians... You don't even want to do anything right by them. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? The person that brought you to this world, do what is right by them or by him. Right? Mm -hmm. Because let me literally, right, it does not make any sense that if people are talking about food, Nigeria should be talking. Because we have no business with scarcity. If we had a proper governance structure, we have no business with scarcity. Hmm. Quite frankly, yes. Imagine if it were, it were Nigerian leaders that was at the time of Joseph. I think everybody would have died in Egypt. No, I'm being, I'm being honest. Because right. it took somebody that had the heart for people, that had mm -hmm. honesty and integrity. Accountability. Do you understand? Yeah. To understand that, the, the uh, what's it called? I can see famine, famine coming. Mm -hmm. So let us plan now and so that we can, we can enjoy later. These things, there are different predictions that have happened over the years. Even the weather conditions, it rained today in January for goodness sake. Hmm. Weather conditions, everything has been saying that there's a lot of things going on. So if you ha are in a position of leadership, right, mm -hmm. your governance style should be in a form that, yes, you truly have the heart of the people and you truly want to preserve your people. Because I don't understand why we keep on having multiple killings and so it seems Ola, like nobody's doing anything Ola, about I, it. I, I have a question now that I just remembered this. I remember Ruben Abati saying something. I was listening to his show one time and he said that it is as though 
there is and he made reference from good luck's period to buhari's period as, as, as at the time he said it is as though there is a demon <laughs> there is a demon in the government house in Asa Rock, such that you have your agenda that you want to do but then eventually when you get in there you don't really know what happened and at the end of the day you see that your period of leadership or your reign is over and you can't exactly say that what you had in mind to do that you did it do you I, I, let I, me ask the normal if she believes that <laughs> because sincerely you okay. look at there's a track record of presidents in nigeria going through even our passenger that everybody's calling godfather and he's looking as though he's the, the, the best of them if you go through their records there is there is they just never meet up people's expectations it's just that eh we manage you you did like this okay we're hoping the next person does better and the next person is worse and the next one is worse and the next one is, yeah, is you, another is the pressure is better worse <laughs> you know no, but let me hear your thoughts in our situation for a while that's it you can't enter a strong man's house without being fortified so in as much as that can come up in the picture i don't think that that is the major issue before you got in, you know what you were preparing for, at least to an extent. You may not have 100% perspective to it, but you have an idea that you're going to experience some level of resistance. And you have to be ready. If you know you don't have what it takes to fight that battle, why not step down? Why not step down? But our people, because of, and I still come back to this uh, uh, um, a point about humanity and greed. We have people who have become so greedy and so self-centered that all that they're thinking of is, I just want to get in. And then when you get in there, you have no plan, you have no structure, you have nothing that you want to offer but you gave a facade that you had everything that you wanted to there's going to be resistance most definitely but if you had it if you have a plan and you have the right kind of people that you need to be able to execute to an extent you may not 100 percent finish what you have but you would have started that journey and nigerians need the kind of leaders and governance that can Push them in the right direction, in the direction that it is possible. We're not telling you to complete the task because it will take years. For where, for where we are today, it took years before we got there. The level of greed and insensitivity just continued to increase. So it's going to take a process to bring us right back to where we can think that that we can begin to see some level of humanity in our decision-making as it affects Nigerian citizens. And we were talking about it, and we said that, unfortunately, some of us may not even be alive to see the change that we have been looking for. But it's going to take deliberate and intentional, determined people who have humanity at the heart, at the core of what their intention for nigeria is to start that process that's what we're looking for hmm. and for nigerians to begin to see that it's possible when they see a glimpse of it i believe that nigerians still have the capacity they just need the right direction when you show them they still have they have capacity for bad but they also have capacity for good and if the right kind of people show them the direction gradually gradually and there's some level of continuity with that if it is possible then we can see the possibility of the kind of nigeria where we have we will not have up to six million children who are under the threat of of of, of scarcity food scarcity and mortality that's absolutely, my conviction absolutely it's just so sad. I think the key word is humanity. Mm -hmm. like where where is your humanity and mm -hmm. and and sensitivity? Like Norma rightly mentioned, you know, it's mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's just. But but <laughs> if you had anything to say, what would that be? If I had anything to say to Mr. President or about the situation at hand. Mm -hmm. 
I think I'll tell Norma's line that at the end of the day, we need to realize that these are people that we are governing and you cannot be an effective leader if you don't learn to listen to people. And for you to listen to people, you have to be able to connect with, with your humanity, to put them, put yourself in their shoes, even though you haven't worn their shoes since you were 14. Mm -hmm. You know, but somehow you have to find a way to be honest with yourself, find out what exactly is the needs of these people that I'm leading, you know, not ruling, leading, mm -hmm. and then try to make, I, I, I don't know, mm -hmm. I mean, do, does it even matter that I'm saying it? Because at the end of the day, it's, it's like year after year, what is it called, tenure after tenure, you keep, get, you keep getting the same thing, and it's just, I don't know, I'm just sort of at a place where... <sighs> Are you indifferent? No, I'm not. I mean, there are a couple things in Nigeria that I'm indifferent about, but right now, considering these plateau killings and every other terrorist attack that is happening within the northern, within the middle belt, I wouldn't say I'm indifferent about that because that would be very insensitive of me. These are human lives that have been lost. These are people who have been displaced. But what I find really interesting is the fact that, remember there was a time when there was almost like a kind of attack a terrorist attack pattern that was going to come to the Middle West, but instantly it was tackled, and we almost don't we don't we almost don't get that anymore. And now you look at these communities that are constantly under attack. These are usually rural areas, places where just, almost just like voiceless used to people. Be so peaceful. Exactly. You it know, these are, these, so are, these are people who seem as though maybe they don't have enough influential people there, or maybe they are voiceless it's not about and just that. normal so that's why people I say living that in the, rural the settings. The allegations about secretly mining these people's um, mineral resources might just be so let us put put chaos there and let's find but you have faith in the government because when they come out to say oh they are they are fighting to, um, the insecurity and all of that you have faith in them to believe that yes they are they're they are being honest with that with that word it could be that for instance the chief of army staff you didn't know, general who's i'm correct labaja has come out to say that you know what we're going to send more military people to patrol this uh, 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 dis distressed societies and help bring a certain level of relief and sincerely true to his word he did send the military personnel and the villagers said yes these military personnel came around they were patrolling but still after they did their whole watchman in the daytime so at again. night the same thing happened so at this point, it's, it's, it's hard as a Nigerian to trust that the government has a hang of this, which is why uh, th that conversation about handling guns and handling weapons, I've been giving individuals li license to handle weapons. That is why that conversation is, it, it, it has already come up. You know, well. it, yeah. On that note, thank you for <laughs> watching. Thank you, Norma Fanga. Thank you, Sanzi. Before you go, please follow us across all our social media handles at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further. Drop a comment and most importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. I'd like to bring back this topic. I'd like to also hear from someone that is truly, you know, in the northern region. You know, let's see how true these allegations are. Now, if you missed today's quote, here it is again from an anonymous source. It says, the rate at which food will be scarce in 2024, we are not ready for it. Ha! That is really, that's really scary and alarming. Yeah. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen.